他是二十大成功召开后首批受邀访华的外国领导人之一。Being one of the first few guests here is a great manifestation of our Iron Brotherhood. 他说，中国国家主席习近平是他的榜样。Not only for me, millions of people around the globe in Pakistan. 他反击西方所谓“中国威胁论”。They will never be able to contain China. China is a mighty power. 巴基斯坦总理夏巴兹·谢里夫接受高端访谈专访，敬请收看。关注国际焦点，洞察世界风云。大家好，欢迎收看本期高端访谈，我是王冠。在中国的外交关系当中，有一个国家一直是一个特殊的存在，它被中方称作“全天候战略合作伙伴”，也是唯一获得中方这样称谓的国家。而在民间，人们把它亲切地称作“铁杆兄弟”，它就是巴基斯坦。今天我们的对话嘉宾是巴基斯坦总理夏巴兹·谢里夫。巴铁关系如何一直铁下去？中巴如何处理双边关系以及国际风云变幻带来的多重挑战？我们一起来听一听谢里夫总理是怎么说的。You are among the first foreign leaders who have been invited to visit China. In fact, you're the first head of government to be invited after the 20th National Party Congress. How do you feel about this arrangement? I guess this is no coincidence. Well, I think it's a it's a matter of great privilege and honor to visit China on the invitation of Chinese leadership and being. Uh, one of the first few uh, guests here is uh, a great manifestation of our Iron Brotherhood. It speaks volumes about our friendship and uh, mutual trust and mutual understanding. So deeply appreciate this gesture on the part of Chinese leadership. What do you think are the major outcomes from your trip, and really the significance of your trip um, in promoting China-Pakistan fraternity? I think I'm returned back uh, to Pakistan tonight, hugely strengthened and encouraged by massive uh, support from Chinese leadership to uh, work jointly for the good of uh, the two peoples. And promote the CPAC, and then promote B to B investments in Pakistan, and also jointly deal with issues which relate to international considerations. And we have also agreed that China and Pakistan will enhance our consultative process. To discuss uh, geopolitical situation, to discuss uh, how to bring progress and prosperity, not only in Pakistan but in the region. And I feel the the best thing which has happened in the last uh, couple of weeks is uh, President Xi Jinping's re-election uh, as General Secretary of the Party for the third time. This is uh, a great news, not only for China, but for entire peace-loving communities around the globe. His uh, dynamic leadership in the last ten years has transformed Chinese society. Has uh, taken 800 million people out of poverty line. This is a miracle. This is of humongous proportion, unbelievable. And then China, which was uh, a country in the 80s, struggling to. You first visited China in 1981. Yes, in 1981, when I was here in China, in 1981, I could hardly see. A car moving on the roads, these were buses and bicycles. And today it's uh, it's a different world. 
You met President Xi twice since you took office as Prime Minister, but you met him even earlier as the Chief Minister of Punjab. Exactly. I saw the photo of you signing some transportation agreements in 2014. What do you think of him as a leader? I think he's uh, a very visionary leader, a very dynamic leader, and uh, a man of great wisdom and foresight. Otherwise, to uh, transform this Chinese society in the face of uh, huge challenges, external, diplomatic, and other issues, to carve one's way out is not a joke. It is an achievement unprecedented. And that shows his grit. That shows his, his courage, his wisdom his uh, sense of uh, understanding of issues. And I believe it all stems from his early days as a young boy, when he spent years in uh, Yellow Land. And I think uh, uh, he had seen things through very closely, poverty, unemployment, and uh, other challenges that uh, always lived in his mind. And as he progressed in life, he used his uh, energy, his uh, commitment to the Chinese people to change their lifestyle. And uh, uh, poverty should not be a stigma on the face of China, which he has done. It is remarkable. And of course, uh, He's a man who has seen both sides of the world. And he always remembered that China in the previous centuries have been maltreated, have been dealt with unjustly and uh, unfairly. He wanted to uh, recover from that uh, embarrassment. And look, China is now touching zenith of glory. It's not uh, uh, through uh, only speeches. It is through practical implementation, hard work, sacrifice, untiring efforts, collective efforts, whether in rural areas or in urban areas, whether in industry or in agriculture. So President Xi Jinping is a role model for me not only for me, millions of people around the globe in Pakistan. And uh, I really admire his leadership. And uh, he's a man who has fought against corruption. He's a man who has uh, broken the status quo. He's a man who looks into the future and with his skills, he has uh, really, really made China as uh, a world-class world country, a country people are really attracted to know how China has grown that quickly. The Chinese miracle. He has something in mind that is to elevate China-Pakistan relations, uh, that is for sure. I want to talk about this Iron Brotherhood of China and Pakistan. You know this, Mr. Prime Minister, that in China we call you Bhatia, right? Yeah, that's right. You like that characterization? I think it's, uh, they call it Bhatai. All right? Yeah, Bhatia. <clears throat> that's Iron Brother. We are Iron Brothers because this friendship is uh, unbreachable. Nobody can damage this, this friendship. Nobody can, you know, find any space in this friendship. No matter what, we will remain friends, we have been friends, and we'll be there forever. And that's the strength of this friendship. Look at uh, the days of COVID, for example. At the point of uh, this uh, COVID pandemic, uh, Pakistan was in dire need of uh, support, expertise, experience, medical uh, experts, etc. And look what China did. China opened all chance to support Pakistan. President Xi Jinping 
under his instructions, millions of uh, vaccines were dispatched to Pakistan. Experts were dispatched to Pakistan. And uh, they offered training programs to Pakistan experts, while hundreds of people were dying every day. In hospitals, you know, beds ran short of uh, supply. Doctors didn't know how to treat uh, uh, this uh, pandemic. And Chinese experts and Chinese medical teams came there and came to a rescue. And there were two injections, uh, a span of 21 days. That's what China did to millions of Pakistan. How can we forget this ever in our life? We can't thank you enough. Thank you, China, but we don't have enough words to thank you enough. Thank you, President Xi, and thank you, people of China, for supporting us during the days of COVID-19, for supporting us now when Pakistan is devastated by unprecedented floods. China has again come to a rescue. So this is our friendship. We stand by each other during the time of adversity. We stand by each other during difficult times. That is our friendship. That is our strength. How are our brothers and sisters doing in Pakistan? I know that's uh, record smashing floods and rainfall. A third of the country is underwater. Um, how are they coping? Yes, one third of the country uh, has been submerged. Even as we speak, uh, water is still stagnating in parts of Sindh and Balochistan which has uh, you know, led to you know, waterborne diseases. And uh, now winter is setting in. In the northern parts, in the mountains, people need shelter. And uh, at this uh, point of uh, dire urgency, China again, you know, first established air bridge, sent uh, goods for flood-affected people, you know, through uh, military aircraft and then through shipments through sea provided very hefty cash amounts not only government of China Chinese companies Chinese people even somebody told me children while watching uh, television uh, um, I have a real story here if you don't mind me sharing a 14 year old schoolgirl in southern China donated nearly much of her pocket money to the people of Pakistan. And she said this, because in 20, 2008, during the Wenchuan earthquake, Pakistan donated all of its reserve tents, strategic reserve tents, to the, the quake victims. And then a friend in need is a friend indeed. She's returning the favor. That's exactly uh, uh, true. You have snatched words from the mouth. And this is like a, a family. You know, this is like one body. If a part of the body you know, aches, the whole body aches. This is truly speaking our fraternal relations. And as you said, a friend in need is a friend indeed. China has always been with Pakistan. And that's the finest part of the story. It's a very emotional relationship. Unity, absolutely emotional. This uh, uh, boy, 14 years old. 14 year old school girl, yeah. School girl. This is a you know, fabulous story, and uh, it is now, I think, uh, uh, spread on social media in a big way. And that speaks volumes about our, uh, our emotional bondage. And I think uh, we are set to move forward and uh, announce our cooperation. President Xi Jinping, I had uh, uh, invited him again to visit Pakistan. And he has been very generous uh, to uh, tell me that he'll be visiting Pakistan uh, uh, soon, inshallah. Talking about development, um, neoliberalism was considered uh, the only viable option to prosperity and uh, you know, ad advancement of society. Those opinions are held by the Western elites. But China is considered a gravity-defying case which is you know, summarized by the Chinese path to modernization, a key phrase coming out of the 20th Party Congress. What's your understanding of this Chinese path 
I think uh, uh, the strongest message with utmost clarity which has come out from 20th uh, <clears throat> session of uh, uh, National Congress of CPC says two things clearly, continuity and sustainability. BRI, Belt Road Initiative, it's all about mutual cooperation and progress and prosperity of peoples living around the globe. It's not about uh, China, it's not about neighboring countries, it's about Eurasia, it's about Africa, it's about South Asia, it's about uh, South Africa, it's about, uh, it's about, uh, it's about uh, East Asia. That is the, uh, uh, the most uh, shining part of this vision of President Xi Jinping, coupled with GDI, Global Development Initiative. And we are uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to announce uh, that uh, uh, we will be one of the first countries having signed this document and we will implement this in Pakistan without any delay. And this is all about globalization. President Xi's vision is about globalization, is about inclusive participation and not uh, exclusive uh, role. And this is where I think he makes a difference between him and other leaders of this world. Talking about global politics, this is so important. It seems that some countries are you know, defining China as an aggressive power and uh, targeting China as the number one national security threat, forming alliances trade-wise, military-wise, technology-wise against China to, can to contain its rise. Um, do you think such fear of China such containment measures are warranted? If you look at uh, the history, China has always been a very prosperous and rich country. But, uh, you know, foreign, you know, entities who came here, they made it into a colony. China opened its eyes in a very free, independent atmosphere in 1949. And now, in about 70, 72 years, look at China. At that point in time, in 49, China had to provide food, shelter, education to its uh, citizens. And it was a great struggle. It was a great effort. And today, Look at China, the second largest economy in the world, a very prosperous country, has uh, trillions of dollars of trade annually, probably six trillion dollars, trillions of dollars of their foreign exchange. People have a uh, home to live, have education, have health, have jobs, have comfortable transport, education, modern skills, modern techniques. China has not shown in, its, in anybody's remotest imagination any germs of expansionism to the contrary. China's philosophy, President Xi Jinping's philosophy is about globalization, is about uh, interaction, is about uh, uh, prosperity and progress. And uh, the policy of those who believe in containment are sadly mistaken. They will never be able to contain China. China is a mighty power. The world cannot operate without China and vice versa. And China believes in peaceful means. Even today, our discussion with uh, President Xi and I said that we want to have peaceful talks with India and they not only fully endorsed my uh, point of view, they encouraged me that this is the way forward. So uh, Chinese uh, uh, military progress is not for aggression, it is for its defense. And rightly so, keeping in view the past history, 
China cannot afford to remain weak in this area. Therefore, China is within its rights to be a militarily strong, yet be a very cautious and careful as not to give even slightest of impression that this power is for aggression. No, that is the finest moment of China's leadership. I want to talk about infrastructure because it's very important to you. You're a three-time Punjab chief minister. Um, when you're a chief minister of Punjab, you're known as a diligent administrator and someone who gets things done, right? Um, Shabazz Speed is a word coined by the news media. Um, you oversaw the road, highways, and uh, the metro line there. I had the privilege of visiting Punjab a few years ago. Um, what do you think CPAC um, or the BRI bring to CPAC Pakistan? CPAC is an offshoot of BRI. And uh, uh, it is, uh, again, uh, a brainchild of President Xi Jinping. And this uh, program was mutually agreed and signed between Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and President Xi Jinping back in 2015, April 2015 in Islamabad. And ever since, $30 billion have been invested. It has given great impetus to Pakistan's economy. And it has uh, energy projects, infrastructure, and uh, multifarious interventions, which has uh, provided thousands and thousands of jobs to people of Pakistan, prosperity and progress. Now we have to move forward. CPAC as an umbrella, B2B interactions, and moving in agriculture, moving in industry, special zones, moving in uh, high-tech industry. Pakistan has uh, a wonderful energetic youth which has, uh, which is very talented. It's amazing, and 80, 90% yes, of the which population. Is, which is very talented, 65%. Yes, you're absolutely correct. And we need to empower them. So I think under CPAC, all these great initiatives will provide greater opportunities to Pakistan. Therefore, I think uh, this friendship, this vision will be harbinger of uh, change in time to come. But there are criticism towards the BRI, which can be summed up as follows. Number one, it leads up to a debt trap. And number two, it shapes up to be China's neo-colonialism. No. Do you think those assertions are fair? Not at all. It brings harmony. It brings uh, peace and progress to people. I mean, uh, uh, it is not uh, something, a combination of uh, stick and carrot. It is only carrot. Stick, where is stick in this? So how can you even think of, uh, uh, you know, colonialism? That was something done through the barrel of the gun. Yeah. Here, it is through economic interaction, inclusive partnership. So I think, please uh, have a very clear uh, differentiation between the two. One last question. What do you think is the truest source of China-Pakistan all-weather fraternity that can be sustained over decades? Now, this is, uh, I think, the strength of this relationship, that uh, we don't feel bad for any country. We want to neutralize opponents. We want to create a sense of uh, responsibility in them and move forward in unison. I think that is the, the biggest trend of this relationship. And I think that's how uh, we should remain uh, non-aligned. We should remain aligned to one goal. And that is that this world, this universe should remain happy, prosperous, and in peace. Prime Minister Sharif, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you.